traders. Where are we going? Looking for the perfect trader. And what the hell is that? No, like seriously, what the hell is that? Who is that? Looking round, still searching, always for the perfect, perfect. So close to perfection, but is it over there? Is it over here? What the hell is that? No, no, get that away! No! Where is it? Still looking for the perfect treasure. Is that it? Porcelain goodness. Or oh, these guys? The small? Nah, definitely not. I mean, they're cool, but the uh, Still, I wonder where do I find perfection? Is it behind me? Do I have to go look outside? Do I spin around in the dust? Or is it behind the street? What? Go put that here! Well guys, if you're still here, after all of that, hello and welcome to another figure review! Today, I'm gonna have a look at my TMNT time! I almost forgot about that. It's TMNT time. I'm gonna have a look at the first Gokin, Oroku Saki. I mean, um, Oraku Saki. NT2, apologize. Why is it called like that and why is it not called Shredder and whatnot? Because this is an unlicensed Shredder figure. They did, obviously, the likeness of the character, but they don't have the rights by Playmates or uh, Nickelodeon. Oh yeah, Nickelodeon has the rights right now. So this is a Shredder. This is definitely Shredder. Don't get this, don't, you know, get confused with that. You've seen the box, and now let's get to the bottom of it. Tonight, I dine on turtle soup. Yep, yep. That's right. You're looking at it. You're looking at this. You're looking at the shredder. How do you think? What do you think about the shredder? I think the shredder's pretty damn good. How good? Well, you know, gotta wait that one out once we get to the final thoughts. But we've only just begun. First of all, with the size. Actually, that rule is too small. Let me get. The big ruler, which doesn't have any inches, so I'm already screwed with that. But he stands at 23 and a half centimeters to the tippy top of his helmet. But if you would just want to count this part, it's 22 and a half. But yeah, really up there, it's 23 and a half centimeters. That means like somewhere around eight inches. You can do the math. I believe in you. But yeah, overall paint and detail of this guy and um. I mean, should I even say the the overall likeness? Honestly, it's their own design. It is a shredder. You can tell it's a shredder. There's no question about that. But here's the deal. They had a crank before this one. So they're technically not allowed to do these. But what a lot of people think why they're getting away with it is because Krang was a robot. And you have a lot of guys doing Transformers, unlicensed Transformers figures. For whatever reason, the copyright law doesn't seem to go for robots or whatever. I, I don't know. The point is, he looks very robotic in his chest part. Of course, the arms are still regular, but if you look at all the detail going on throughout the shoulder parts, even the helm, well, the helmet still looks pretty, pretty normal, except for the visor, I guess. But like I said, you have all these lines just going down there it's, to make it look kind of robotic. It's what I think they were going for. And it def definitely gives it a nice look. You have all this added detail to it, which just makes it more sweet. You have very, very nice and shiny metallic paint job going on all throughout the body, the shoulder pads. It's a little purplish. You have like a dark gray with uh, hints of purple, which once again, I'm a big fan of because, I mean, a Shredder, he already has purple in his outfit. So there's no, no issue with that. His helmet is entirely die cast, by the way. That is... Be aware of that. If you have small children, I'm just saying, this is sharp. This is very sharp, because this is real metal. It's not It's not to play around with. Final look at the detail. You have all the muscle work. You have shading in the arms. They, they are not uh, clean, though, unfortunately. But overall, the sculpt work is very nice, and the paint that's there is also looking very cool. Also, by the way, the feet are also die-cast. So, stability is no problem with this guy. That's the figure. Let's have a look at the articulation of this Shredder dude. First of all, the head has a lot of room up here. It's just a pack that's going into a ball into the head. 
and you can bring that all the way around you have a lot of wiggle room but you get a lot more out of the neck but it's very stiff but it's just i think it's entirely a ball joint it's just pegging in there because of how it's shaped and uh, because of how it's shaped it honestly looks weird but it gets the job done it works but like I said, it's stiff. You have the shoulder pads, which are on a hinge with a pack going into a ball, so it rotates. You can rotate it around a little bit, and of course, you can bring it up. Obviously, you have the shoulders, which are on these nice butterfly joints, which are entirely molded, so you don't really break up the sculpt. You can bring it forward all the way, you can bring it back, and it rotates around. It, does, it doesn't actually rotate around. Never mind. I mean, it's a butterfly joint, so that's... Uh, not working. You have the hinge up here, you can bring up the arm all the way, and then you can also bring it around. Full circle, we have bicep swivel going on over here, double hinged elbow, which is just getting blocked because of all the muscle work, otherwise it would go up more. Let me see. Yeah, look at it. The single, the single hinge over here, if I push that one up, it goes up even more and we have the fist which is on the old school cut ball joint with two pegs going into here and one into here problem with it problem with that one though is that it doesn't it doesn't cooperate very well the fist is entirely soft plastic and as a result i don't the ball joint in there doesn't really rotate with it and it's a little bit of a problem i mean you can fix that you can still play around with that just be aware of it and you have these pieces which are actually just attached to claws can take those off because he has more hands and you only get one set of claws which is fine there's no problem with that torso articulation we only have a hinge in there so it goes back and forth nicely but no side to side none of that at the hips over here rotates around it's just on a swivel there's also no back and forth for that so pretty limited in this entire entire torso area we have the big ball joints going on in the legs you have a hinge over there, and you go, can bring the legs all the way out, and of course you can bring them forward. Those are ratcheted, as you can hear, so it helps for stability, and it also goes back. It's a very old school thing, though, having these balls up here. It, it works, though, for this big figure, and you have all this room over here. It doesn't look so great, but luckily, it's hidden by that. Also, bonus points for actually molding the balls over here so they don't really stick out, and you can rotate over here at the fly, but it also rotates, it, don't, it only rotates in an angle, as you can tell. It always goes around like that. It doesn't go straight, what I'm trying to say. But you have that, and it's fine. You have a double hinged knee. Once again, there's, there's some molding in there, in the knee pad, so it looks decent, I'd say. With knees, that's always a problem. I mean, you can bring it up like that, still get some forward motion out of it, and it looks good. So, I'm okay with that. Now, the feet are kind of weird. You can you have this entire block in the foot, which is connected with a big hinge over here that's just pegged into the, uh, into, the, uh, into the leg. That is fine, goes around, and it goes out to the side, but only on one part, because, like you can, as you can tell, here's the, here's the hinge that just makes it rotate to one part, but it doesn't go out because there's nothing here. And you have a toe hinge that's stuck. Eh. This is die cast once again. And I'm having trouble pushing without cutting myself on these. And there's a toe hinge. It's very stiff and very limited and doesn't really work because it doesn't it, it rotates out like that. So if you have him standing, it's just like it should go up like that. It should be flat over here at all times, so I don't the toe hinge is not great. Just leave that on there there you go and finally his cape there's some wires going down here on both sides at the on the edge of the cape there it is you have some wire work which you can move around so you can have all sorts of poses if you just want to let it hang down if you have some some fighting poses for like oh, when it goes out in the wind i'm not a huge fan of the wire work but it's fine i mean it's an it's a nice option to to get more posability out of your shredder. Alright, accessories, starting off with the helmet, which comes in the packaging, and you don't have it on him, 
at first, because at first you have the regular Orokusaki, Orakusaki, I'm sorry. And basically what you have to do is just take his hair piece and pull it back, put it back in there, or, you know, pull it out, respectively, if you're just taking him out of the packaging. Which brings up one thing I forgot to mention with the overall look. His hat looks tiny if he's not wearing the helmet. I mean, with the helmet it doesn't seem that bad, but this is just laughable. I mean, look at his biceps, and it's just like... It's just his arms are bigger than his head. His hands are bigger than his head. And I gotta say one thing about this piece. When you have something that's in the promotional images, and you're thinking, oh, that's probably just for promo, but they actually put that in there, I'm very happy about that. So, you have this to hold all the weapons, and you can put in the helmet up there, and to hold all of his weapons, which we'll get to right away. But I just wanted to have a look at this because it's very nice and detailed. I don't know why it's hollow back here, but still, like I said, I'm not complaining. I'm I'm happy that we get this. I didn't I didn't even think it was included. So then we have this, which is from what I'm guessing, it's just some uh, some packs, some replacement parts. That's all I can gather from that, because we don't have instructions. Alrighty. All the accessories. I mean, this is the best way for me to show it to you without fiddling around with my hands too much. First of all, he has his own sword, and like I mentioned already at the beginning, it all looks kind of robotic. And then he comes with all of the turtles' weapons, because I guess in this universe, in this version, Shredder has one. <gasps> yeah, Leo's swords look very nicely done with the blue handles, and he got a nice metallic paint job going on on the blades once more you got the uh, electronic robotic style also with raft size got the red handles everything else it is nice and metallic let me actually zoom in instead of just fiddling around so much there you go get a look at all of this and you have Johnny's bow staff I have to move the camera up there we have a lot of purple going on I don't know why they made it so much purple and then you have Mikey's nunchucks with some real chain and some really nice detail going on in it. And we got some more hands. Hold on. Those are for the size. Nice. So you can, uh, you know, the classic pose. My favorite side pose where you put the middle blade, the middle thing of the side. Is that even a blade? I mean, it is a blade in, on here. But you put the middle blade of the side going on here and then the other two go out to the side and this is a closed hand fist hands, side hands and then you have the soft hands soft open hands on the figure for all these weapon all this weapon goodness okay a couple more things about the weapons I just figured this out because I just wanted to take this out for the final thoughts and then I realized his big blade actually splits and you have a you have a hinge over here so you can make it like a scissor blade or something, I don't know. Another thing is the material. I think it's a very good material because it's soft-ish. In a way where it will bend without falling apart. It will not break easily, it will bend. And that's the same for all the turtle weapons and this one is a little bit more sturdy. But uh, overall, good, good material. And now let's have some good old comparison time. As you can tell, I just rolled in a bunch of turtles. And the EX Goken Krang, I'm just gonna start off with these guys. You got the EX Goken Krang, and the uh, first Goken, actually, sorry. First Goken Krang and first Goken Treader. Those are all pretty nicely in scale with each other. But that's kind of the problem of this guy. He's not really scaling up with anybody from anywhere. You got, he's towering over the uh, the classic collection turtles. Which are the tallest turtles really that are out there? And just for comparison's sake, you got the Naked Turtles. They are like half as big as he is. So this is, I mean, if maybe for a Super Shredder, uh, even then. And finally, we have the SH figures. He's not completely standing straight, but he's basically clocking in at the same height as the Naked Turtles. A little bit, yeah, basically. That's basically the same. And this brings us to the final force. One more thing before I go though, I forgot to mention that. You cannot take off his cape. It's not really removable. I guess you could if you really take off the uh, 
shoulder pads, but it's not meant to be what I'm trying to say. I guess you could work around it if you're handy, handy dandy at working around with these things without breaking anything, but uh, this is definitely connected somewhere, so I'm just saying, I'm just saying. That was something I, I would have liked to just take off the cape, because I'm not a huge fan of the cape. Anyhow, overall thoughts of this guy, final thoughts. So first of all, he looks amazing. I really dig the electronic, technologic, robotic look, whatever you want to call it. The helmet looks very nice, the die cast appreciated, especially going down to the feet. When it comes to the paint job, it's mostly very nice. I really, really like the dark grey purplish with the light grey metallic blades going on over there and the flat grey going on in the chest and everything. That is fine. However, you have a bit of a problem with the dirt going on in the arms. I mean, they're nicely shaded and everything, but overall it's just... There's just some issues with it that's unfortunate. And the overall torso articulation is meh, just meh, alright. Everything else articulation was I'm um, okay with. I mean, it's, I guess the feet that they don't rotate out, that's fine, no, I'm fine with it. The only real thing is I would have liked the torso to go left and right somewhere instead of just being stuck in this position. So there you go with that. Do I recommend this guy or not? I do. I think it looks very cool. The only, I mean, the other problem is he doesn't really go in with any other collection although there's rumors about first goking also doing turtles i don't know if they're gonna get away with that because turtles don't look like robots he clocks in i mean i paid around 100 bucks for mine plus like what was it 10 bucks shipping it was pretty good and i'm okay with the price especially at this size especially with all the all the accessories that he comes with and the look is very good and that's gonna do it, as usual, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this review, feel free to hit it up with a like and a subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for more figure reviews, gameplay stuff, and whatever. The Shredder!